Okay, welcome to session two, week two of uh, AutoCAD, or intro to AutoCAD. Uh, first up, all we're going to do is uh, go into AutoCAD and just uh, double check, um, especially if you move machines from last week, just double check that your uh, user interface is how we roughly want it. Uh, just just got to bring up a drawing first. Um, I have to present it with this screen. We're just going to just click on the start drawing just so we can get into something. And then uh, immediately we can just uh, click over here. Um, and that gives you the list. So um, just running through it again, I've got coordinates. I'm just going to talk about the things that are on. Um, coordinates, model space, grid, snap mode infer constraints, uh, dynamic input, ortho mode, polar tracking, object snap tracking, 2D object snap, line weight, transparency, selection cycling, annotation visibility, auto scale, annotation scale, workspace switching, annotation monitor, and that's it. All right, so last week we just basically just looked at the workspace. I, I, I do have the uh, object, uh, sorry, the properties uh, screen on as well, or dialog box. I'm not sure if you've got it up, uh, but um, that's, some, that's something that can be added later. Uh, okay, so uh, what we're going to do today is actually begin some sort of drawing, but before we can do that, we need to um, also know how to uh, use the mouse and how to move around the screen and, and just uh, a few little housekeeping things like that, basically. All right, so uh, first of all, I uh, just want to give you some general, obviously, let's just go on to the learn site, uh, just to see what's on there. So if you go on to the learn site uh, here, you can go either through uh, portal, then pick up learn, or uh, direct, oh, you haven't got that, sorry, yours is a bit different. Um, it's like that, so you can go straight to learn like this. And, and you do need to sign in with your student at TAFSA, student, what is it, student dot something or other, TAFSA, either you dot AU, yeah, and put your password that you have um, put in to start the computer. Sign in there, so have that ready. Um, I've got a few of them here, but uh, it's the one called Intro to AutoCAD. That we need for introduction to AutoCAD. All right, so basically we're on here. So I just wanted to um, uh, go to the second item here, which is the uh, AutoCAD user interface, which is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, this is a great shot of the user interface of AutoCAD 2015. <clears throat> but uh, down here there is a there are some drawings as well, but there is this PDF file here, which um, is basically straight out of uh, download out of a book, it's just the first chapter. Uh, and basically, what I'm going to talk about is what's going to be covered in there. Perhaps there might be one or two extra things that I might not talk about, when there might be a one or two extra things that I'm going to talk about, and they're not in the book. But roughly, this is what we're going to follow. So. Uh, if you listen to me, and then uh, also if you have time to do some bedtime reading, um, then you you get the whole whole picture in case we miss any gaps. But um, the thing is, um, this is also a good thing to look at uh, from the um, uh, table of contents point of view of just how much there is in AutoCAD. Basically, what is given to you here is uh, chapter one, so all the one point whatever six to whatever one point seven. And then chapter two and on is learning how to draw lines and that sort of thing. But the first chapter concentrates on just the user interface. But just going through here, um, it shows you what, you know how much there is and how much there is to learn, really, uh, not to put you off. But we're going to cover all this stuff, you know, moving objects, copying objects, mirroring, uh, editing with grips to not to a deep uh, uh, and uh, not to an advanced level because hardly anybody uses it that way. Um, just what you need to know, um, and we're not going to do. Well, we're going to do our own projects. Again, they have specific projects in here, as you can see, uh, architectural and mechanical. But we are much broader here than just those two disciplines. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we'll 
give you the option to do your own. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so there's a few things that, there to look at if you wish. And then it gets into uh, basically the user interface itself down here. I'll skip that. Uh, okay, so all right, so that just talks about what uh, the terminologies are. So the application menu is uh, the big A at the top left hand corner. Uh, across here, we looked at last week and we made it 100%, some of you. Um, so this is uh, the cross here is basically, you know, the thing, that thing there, <laughs> uh, the pointer or whatever. Mine's 100%. Uh, what else do we need? Drawing window, number three. Uh, number three has uh, sort of changed names over the years. It used to be called the, be called the graphics area. Uh, so I might refer to it as that uh, in the future, but uh, it's basically where you're drawing. Some other programs call it the canvas, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, so quick access bar is uh, at the top here, as with most programs. Uh, you have an option to, or oh, is, it, is it Revit? No, I think. Yeah, no, here too. You can show it below the ribbon as well if you want. Right. One thing here, I did it last week, I did turn on the layer uh, option here. You can turn on additional buttons, uh, but uh, I did turn on the layer one. If you wish to be the same as me, uh, do so. There's a little drop down arrow just there. Right. And what else is there? Um, the ribbon, of course, we know it's. Um, it's the same with Microsoft Office software, so they call it the ribbon. Um, info center to the right at the top. Um, there's a few extra little. This one here was interesting. Yeah. Sure, what? Oh, yeah, this one here. I was, I was looking, looking at that earlier, I thought. There's no find, uh, it's just through the, um, it might be through the electronic book, you, you, it'll click there and I don't know what that means. <laughs> find what? It's not actually finding anything. It insinuated to me that this is like, if you want to find something, you know, you click that. But it doesn't, you just, you just create a block. It's a, it's a block command, don't worry about that. That's uh, creating your own objects like chairs, windows, that sort of thing. Um, and that. That is uh, basically it's that button there. I don't know why it's, why it's sitting in in there, uh, but anyhow, that's I wouldn't have introduced that. I think it's just talking about the um, maybe the help or something. I imagine. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's about it for that. I'm just going to go through and uh, yeah, this this thing here is a navigation bar. Yes. Uh, what else is there? We went through some of this stuff already down the bottom here where we turned on some of these icons that we want to be using. So we've done that already. And there's the navigation bar which is interesting here, um, which is actually in AutoCAD. Let me just turn off the grid because you can't see it. I mean, if I go over it, you can see it. But uh, just turn off the grid. That's F7, the function key. Um, but yeah, if you go over that, there's a little thing there. We also got the view cube for 3D work. That should always look like that if you're doing 2D. Uh, saying top there. Yeah, you can actually pan uh, your your image or your your drawing. Uh, you can zoom extends and you can do all sorts of things here. But I'll show you how to do it uh, with the mouse as well. <laughs> all right. So that's basically um, well, basically that's that. Now with the with the ribbon here. Uh, we're basically going to stick with the home button, but of course we later on we we probably will get to annot annotate if we do any dimensions and things like that. Uh, so that's another tab there, and we'll probably insert some doors and things like that. that we might uh, need to insert into our floor plan. Um, yeah, basically the rest we probably won't use much of that. Uh, in the home one, uh, the creation tools are on the left here under the draw panel. All these things expand out as well, so they have additional uh, commands down here sometimes because uh, they don't all fit in here. Even though, for example, they've got they've got them doubled up on top of each other, like here under the rectangle, there's uh, also the polygon, so they sort of pop up if you click the little down arrow. Um, it's ellipse one, a few different ellipses there. Um, the hatch has got a few different type of hatches there. So just be aware that 
sometimes the command you're looking for might be behind something else. For example, the trim has got the extend behind it, or things like that. Um, so I think that makes it a little more difficult to learn um, because you can't see it there in front of you if you're looking for extend, or you, you can't see anything that says extend there. You have to go looking, <laughs> like oh, those pop up books, you know, the, see what's behind the picture, <laughs> you know, so 3D books. <laughs> anyway. That's always fun. All right, so um, all right, so what we're going to do now is uh, go back to um, ah, obviously uh, this is the this is the uh, command line down here, uh, we, which we moved and docked last week. I hope yours is the same. Um, all right, so we'll, I just want to teach you a couple of tricks with this mouse before we go ahead and do anything. So I will get you to um, now when I say click generally means left click, left mouse click, otherwise I say right click. Um, so the the middle mouse button is a scroller, I refer to it as a middle mouse button because it is a button as well. Alright, so, okay, so basically uh, with, let's just get used to drawing a line, start with, alright, it doesn't matter what length. First of all, we're going to go left click on the line command here, which is on the, under the home tab. Just one click and let go. You do not hold down your finger. All right. Left click. Wall click. 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 Left click. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Click. Left click. I don't know if I said it right or not. We'll play it back and, uh, and hear the video evidence. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it's left click, um, and then uh, you uh, lift your finger off and and you and you just left click again. All right. And just draw. And then you don't you don't hold it down. You just let go of your finger. All right. So then you go to your next destination, and you left click again. And and with this sort of command, you could be left clicking forever because it sort of it, it chains or continues along, uh, and it only stops when you press escape or press enter. All right. So we just escape there. We've drawn a couple of lines on there, so it gives us some context as to when we start zooming in and out, at least we can see them getting bigger and smaller. Okay. All right, so that was the whole idea of drawing that, but also to get you used to the way AutoCAD works, um, there's hardly ever any time that you want to uh, press or click, hold and drag in AutoCAD. It's only a couple of situations where you can use that one I can think of now, right now, is this one here, where I go left click on here, um, then actually I don't even do it like that. Doesn't it actually work quite like that? Like you won't move. I, I highlight something, and then I left click again, hold and drag to push it out. We never use that unless you want to actually move something that doesn't matter how far you moved it. I just guessed, just about that much. And and it, it, when you want to draw something accurately, you don't do it that way. You use the actual move command. No. But Anyway, I'll undo that. That's Control Z or undo. It's up here. Get used to undo. It's your best friend. All right. Um, your best friend is undo, but possibly the redo is is good, but it's not as good as the undo because you can only redo one step. So um, if I do um, if I do undo. You know, so if I undo a few times, then I want to redo. I think it, it only redoes the the last well the last thing. So you, you you could be in trouble. So be careful. You can't keep redoing forward forward. You can undo back a lot. But I want to do a few more steps. I'll show you how that works a bit better. All right. Okay. Um, let's learn how to zoom. Okay. So first of all, um, we we have these little uh, tools here on the navigation bar which help you zoom and, and do other things. But the natural thing to do nowadays is use a scroller. So I suggest you put your crosshair uh, on the thing that you want to zoom into. So basically, if I want to zoom into this corner of this, I'll put my crosshair roughly there, and I'll push the mouse up, the mouse wheel. Sorry. All right. So just scroll it up. And you can see how it's sort of sort of sticking to the middle, but you know, I wasn't quite close enough to that on top of that corner, so it, it went off to the side a bit. 
but you can always correct me. You're right. Looking, <laughs> not sure. Have you drawn some lines? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, you can't log in. Okay. So, okay. So I was just talking about uh, how when you zoom in, I'll just do it again. So if you hang around there and you just zoom in, it sort of sticks there, which is pretty good. Sometimes uh, you might be a bit off to the side, so it just goes off to the left in this instance. So you want to pan it. So what you do when you want to pan it uh, to come across to the middle, uh, you just hold down this mouse button, the scroller one, right, the middle one. Just push it and hold it down, and you drag. It gives you the little hand symbol, and you drag to the, in this case, to the right, to center it. Right. How about that? All right. So that's um, that's two two things that this scroller does. It does actually do another another two. But we're only going to learn one more because the third, the fourth one is about uh, only if you're in 3D, they you need to worry about that. But I'll show it to you because you inevitably use it, and then how do you get out of it? <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So in 2D, you only need three bits, but there's four. It does. All right. So, so it does a pan. It does a scrolling, and the other thing it does is double clicking it in the. I was going to say a graphics area, we're going to call it now the drawing area. So if you're in the drawing area here and you double click on it, it zooms, extends. So it fills up the whole page with your drawing. All right, so um, that's especially handy if you've lost your drawing. Um, well, yeah, how can you use your drawing? Well, you might not be careful when you are actually zooming. Uh, so instead of having your cursor where it should be, you actually sort of bottom right or something, and you're just going, oh, which way did it go? <laughs> and you don't know where it went. And so you're panning, panning, oh, I can't find it. You know, so you just double click and it comes back. All right. okay. That's handy to know. That's why I'm telling you all this stuff first up. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Okay, so that's the, what's called a zoom extends, and it comes in. Now, if you have a look at now that I showed you that way, which is the preferred way because it's faster, uh, I'll show you this as well. So this this here, uh, it's got the pan, but it's all driven by the left mouse button. You left click it and you left click to pan. So you just left click to you know the left one and you pan like that. If I want to get out, I'll escape or right click and exit. So but it does mean you have to pop over here and find it and then go back, right click and exit. Whereas just clicking the middle mouse button is much quicker. Uh, this here has got the extents as well. Uh, so if I zoomed uh, out of the way, I can click, see that there? Uh, that's the extents. So that's quite good. Um, it has a little drop down below that, which does other things. One is the extents, the other one is Windows, Window, uh, Previous. Real time, wherever that is actually. Zoom all, dynamic, yeah, scale. Some of these are in, out, well, you know, they're not really used nowadays <laughs> that much. But window one might be handy if you've got a huge place and you know, you might want to say, okay, I'll do a window, and then you can go left click, lift your finger up, left click, and go directly to that point that you want to go to. All right. How about that? So, but uh, now I said there's a fourth thing it does, and uh, if you have a look at this uh, here, the, the view cube, which is not very cubic right now, <laughs> but it is a cube. That's what I call it, the view cube. Um, if, if you hold down the shift key, because later on I'm going to teach you some things like um, if you hold the shift key down and whilst you're in a trim command, it does something, for example. And it may be that you're left holding the shift key down and you want to do some zooming in and you accidentally do this. You, you, have, you have, see the cube is now, it's now gone into 3D. Although I've only drawn 2D line, I'm actually in 3D mode. All right. So, then you, have to, you know, then you have to try and get out of that. <laughs> okay. So that, how do I do that? Well, I was holding down the shift key, and I was panning at the same time. Well, the panning motion. 
So if, if, if I don't have the shift key down, it's just panning. If I have the shift key down and go and pan, I'm actually doing that. So see if you can get yourself in 3D and see if you can get out. Well, you can't get out yet, but I'll show you. You well, we should be able to get out. Right. So, so, yeah, shift key, yeah, shift key down, and the mid and the pan, and, and move your mouse up and down a little bit, so you can get um, a nice cube over here. All right, before before we do any any three any two D, let's do some three D. Hey, okay. See those lines you got there? All right. Highlight and like that. So what I did, I went, click over here, and let go of my finger, and click over here. All right? Don't do this. We hold your finger down because you're going to get this squiggly thing, all right? All right. So highlight everything like that. And and over here we have we have the properties, okay? All right, okay, so I'm just going to zoom it in a little bit because mine's too small. All right, so I actually have no idea how big this thing is, but, um, you know, the, the distance across here. Uh, but I'm just going to um, see this thing here called thickness. I'm going to put a number in there. I'm going to put in 2,000. Now, it's, it will depend on your size. If you're drawing something about that big or if you're drawing something that's room size, it's hard to know. Uh, yeah, see, mine's thrown it up in the air there. So I can you can adjust this bigger. I think it's too big. Just go 1,000 or, or just yours. Adjust it so it's relevant. Uh, I'll change the thickness part of it. And um, that's actually now showing you a little better the 3D object. So we had just flat lines before. And just by changing that, we've given it a, a 3D uh, a height as such. Uh, we're going to do that later as well. We will do that later when we do the actual floor plan. Uh, but for now, that's um, and you can change it from wireframe. If you come over here, there's some yeah, just over here. You can you have some um, tools. 2D wireframe is what it's on by default. You can change it to say shaded with edges, and it gives you that. All right. So now you can see this thing in 3D. All right. All right. So basically, I had another question when I was uh, heading out there. So uh, that was uh, when I do my line command, I get all these angles and stuff like that. We're going to come to that in a minute. But basically, that's controlled by this thing here called dynamic uh, input. And I'll talk to you what that does very soon. Um, so that if you don't have it, it just means that it's not turned on. That's all. All right, so basically let's backtrack and get back to where we were now. Uh, before we backtrack, uh, we, well, we are backtracking literally. I don't want you to go to the two, 2D yet view until uh, we brought these um, all these objects down to flat as well. So just reverse the whole thing, just highlight that, change that to zero, the thickness, and um, we change this from shaded edges to 2D wireframe. And we can click top on this view, view cube. And hopefully that would do it. Sometimes it might not do it. Uh, but if it doesn't, you might have to just call me. But there is a sequence you can run through um, <clears throat> to make sure it does go on top. I'm happy to just run through it with, with you. You can write it down, but you might not have, have to use it. But that should fix it. If it doesn't fix it, you type in UCS, enter. That stands for user coordinate system. And you pick the world option. All right. And then you go plan, type in plan, enter. And you pick the world option again. All right. And that, that will definitely fix it, in theory. <laughs> All right. So that's. If it didn't go to the top view like before, you just type in UCS, enter, W, enter, then type in uh, plan, enter, W, enter for world. You write it down. All right, so you can see here what I've done. 
I typed in UCS, then I picked the world option, then I typed, uh, when I, you always press enter after you type something in, and I'll go through that again. So plan, enter, W, enter. That will make sure you are, you are in 2D, all right? If you ever do that shift key and get yourself in trouble, it'll make sure it returns you back into 2D, all right? Now, I touched on something before, that entering thing. So when you're typing something in, this is a golden rule in AutoCAD, um, you always have to press enter after you type something in, whether it's a distance you put in, or you, or you type the command, or you're giving it an option, like a W option, uh, all the commands have options. Sometimes you can type them in, uh, well, usually you can type them in, uh, but uh, you also usually have the option now to click on the option itself. So if I went UCS, which is a command we were just using before, down here you see the command options. Um, they all can, they're all hyperlinked as such, so you can actually click on them. And but uh, if you don't want to click on them, you can just type the actual letter that is highlighted, which in this case for face is F, uh, for world is W. All right, you just type in W, enter, or click on it. Whatever is easier for you. All right. It also pops up. I think I just noticed it before. Um, Sometimes it pops up here as well, but didn't this time. Not sure. Uh, so you can pick it from the menu as well. All right. Enough of that, I suppose. Any questions uh, about that? Yeah, all good. All right. So remember the golden rule. And, um, and, and also the other rule is that if you are going to type anything in, as in give it a command, so you know the line command, for example, and, and you, you know you know it's there, but you're getting um, a little confident and you want to type it in now. So you start typing L-I-N-E, -L -I -N -E, uh, and this sort of starts popping up as you're typing it in like that. Um, but you either got to select it from there, in which case you don't press enter, or if you're not going to select it from there, you've got to press enter after you type it in. All right. Okay, so uh, okay, so that's that. Uh, all the commands have a short, or well, most commands, I don't know, have a, um, like a short command, so L for line, so you can just um, shortcut that if you want to. Um, there's, there's the first letter, again, if I'm going to type the first letter, I've got to press enter after that, L, enter. Not the same case, for example, for Revit. The Revit, Revit's different. You just press L, for example, it just does it. You don't have to worry about the enter. But AutoCAD, you have to press enter. Uh, so L, L, L for line, <clears throat> E for arrays, for example. Um, yeah, so it's uh, E, X for extend. <clears throat> so you're getting the gist of it, perhaps. It's um, <clears throat> so the first letter, the first and second letter, or first, second, and third letter of a command, if you know a command. SPL, SPL is for spline. SPL, spline, yeah. <clears throat> I was using that today, so. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, uh, sorry? SPL, SPL for spline, yeah. Um, so, there is one exception that I know of, and that's explode. Uh, thing EXP must be for something. Let me type it in. Uh, EXP is for something. <clears throat> Can't remember what. EXP is for export data. There you go. I don't know why that that's important to have a short anyway. But um, if we raise EX, we said it's for extend. EXP is for export data. So they went X for explode. It's only one. That's just a, a, an unusual exception to the rule. Yeah. So all right. <clears throat> Anyhow, at first everything is here in front of you. Let's explode there, by the way. Okay, so let's um, now, um, and as going along, we're going to um, obviously talk to you more about the interfaces of coming to it. Um, here, down, down here, for example, is our coordinates. Have you got the coordinates up? It should be. It should be up for you. <clears throat> That's the coordinate system. So, as I'm moving my cursor, not that I'm using that. We probably won't use that, but it's handy to. You know it's there and just gives you some sort of a gauge. For example, uh, if I want to get to zero zero, where's my zero zero? Probably the left hand side. I don't know somewhere. But you can see we got um, three separate 
um, numbers there, uh, and they're separated by a comma. So uh, the Z one is not changed. It's zero. That's the last one, zero. Uh, so basically, we are working in 2D now. Uh, we're not working in 3D. <clears throat> and this is basically the, if you might want to look at it as the GPS coordinate of where we are in the world, our drawing world. All right. So um, you can specify to start a line, for example, from a particular coordinate location, if you have got it. If you don't have it, then that's fine. Normally, we don't really have it, uh, unless you've been told, if you're a surveyor or something like that, to go, you know, or, or your surveyor says go to that location, then you can just type it in and go to that location, and, and that's it, you know. All right, so let's um, now um, del delete that. So how, are we gonna, how, do we, how do we delete this? Yeah, that's the other thing you need to know. How do we delete it? All right, first of all, I showed you how to select stuff before by going uh, left click here and left click over here. Now, when I say left click there and I say and then I say left click over here, it means I have lifted my finger off in between. All right, that's that's uh, assumed. Okay, and there it goes. Now, I've selected those now. You can delete them by uh, selecting the erase command or you can use, I use the keyboard command. Uh, which is just a delete key on the keyboard. I find that easier. But but you can do all sorts of things. You can use the erase command here. You can right click and erase. There's no such thing as delete on here. <laughs> they don't call it delete. Everyone else is delete. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you can do it any way you like. So you'll find there's three or four different ways you can get to a command. All right. Okay. So. Where are we? All right, so basically, let's go with um, over here. All right, uh, AutoCAD, this is, our, this is our learning course. Um, uh, we are basically doing the interface uh, now, but um, we're going to move on and do other stuff. Practice exercises. <coughs> That's the one, I think. Yes. So the first one we're going to do is this one here called uh, coordinates and layers, not so much layers, more coordinates. All right, so we actually are not going to uh, use it. Um, uh, as, as it says, not not word for word. It's not going to be step by step, but we're going to uh, do the diagram that's in there. We are going to just um, just use the default layer for this one. Um, as a disclaimer, we never use layer zero for drawing anything. We always create a layer for something. If it's a wall, we'll create a wall layer and put the walls in that. If it's a window, we'll create a window layer, put the windows in that. All right. So it groups everything together nicely. At this point, we're not interested in that. We just want to learn how to draw using angles or whatever distances. Uh, when we get to do our little house, then it will make more sense uh, rather than I mean, we only got one thing, it's just an outline of something we're doing, so it doesn't make sense to draw a layer. But however, however, the way this exercise is structured, it gets you to draw, if you did it, followed it properly, it gets you to draw three different sort of outlines or shapes on top of it themselves, so that it does call for to layer the first one under polygon one, polygon two, and I think polygon three, three different layers. So then you draw it on top of itself, and then you, you try and lose yourself in there and and turn things on and off, <laughs> but we're going to do that with uh, house plan instead. All right. We're only going to draw one diagram, and so there's no need to layer it. Okay, so let's go with this. There is this um, thing here. With each of, each of these, there is um, um, like a, a PDF and a drawing that you can that it refers to. Except the first one's a bit different, but the rest um, they're fine. The drawings they're fine. Uh, the first one is a bit contradictory. That's a bit weird, actually. But anyway, because it, it, it just wants you to start with a blank drawing anyway. Um, and then the instructions say, open it from uh, from the file menu. Um, and it doesn't ever refer to this thing here that it asks you to download anyway. So I don't know. Uh, so ignore that one. It's a bit different. We're going to run through it together. 
Um, but yeah, the rest are okay, and it gives you a bit of a, a clue as to what we're going to do each week. Uh, minus the object snaps, we would we, we, we do a quickie on those because um, we're going to learn a lot about the object snaps as we're actually drawing stuff. Um, and even from today, we're going to have object snaps on anyway. So, um, yeah, and then we we'll move on to uh, uh, editing, copying, and stretching. But as I, I think I said last week, um, there is something fundamentally wrong with this course in the way that it doesn't actually teach you how to draw anything, but it goes through into editing everything, move, copy, whatever. So we're going to have to learn how to draw a few things before we can move on to those. So there's going to be a little break in between where we're not doing that because um, the, there is no reference material. All right, so let's um, let's do that. All right, so this uh, I'm just going to open up this uh, exercise PDF only. I'm not going to download the drawing because... Uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. So is it this one, the first one, uh, this one up here, coordinates, layers, right? this one. Yeah, I'm going to open this one up. For you guys, you can open it up and drag this to your screen on the right. Uh, just have it there so that you can don't have to flick between screens like I have to. Um, oh, that's fine. If you've got the layers in already, that's fine. You can just use them. It's not going to hurt. It's fine. It just means you're better organized uh, than I am. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, the screen comes up like this, and it asks you to um, open up a drawing now. It says start AutoCAD, um, close all open files. We could do that actually. We'll close all open files, so we're all starting from the same page. Um, and it says go to new and select a template. Okay, so we'll talk about that. And then it says uh, save it as coordinates exercise. So that's why I'm saying if you downloaded the exercise that gave you, it's already got a name on it, so there's no need to save it as. Um, but anyhow, um, yeah, let's close this one here. You can close it by going to this little, see how there's tabs at the top? You got the start, and then you got the drawing one. You can, uh, you, unless you've already done work in it, you can close it and start again. Um, I was just saying no to that. So we're all starting from the same thing. Okay, so here when I press start before, what it actually, uh, what it actually uh, did, it actually went and opened up a template file. All right, and the template file you opened up was this one here. If I go, this little down arrow here, uh, it's sort of highlighted. It's acat iso.dwt, very hard to see from where you are, but in front of you, you should be able to read it. Um, so that basically tells me that it's opened up the uh, metric um, version of, of the template file that they supply. Um, there is another one called acat, and that's the imperial version. All right. So, uh, And there's a whole lot of other ones, which for manufacturing, architecture, or whatever, whatever. Uh, the fact is that... Um, I don't know anybody in the world that actually will have met that ever uses those as they come. <laughs> they use pretty much useless <laughs> uh, because everybody has their their own thing. You know, none of them really have any layers or anything like that in them, so they're not really helpful. But when you're starting out your own office, you start with one of those and you populate it with layers and blocks and whatever symbols things, and then. And then when you finish your first project, that's your template for the next one, minus what you drew. So you delete everything and just keep it as a template for the next one. And then you add more because the next project is a bit different. It's got a couple more layers, you know. So that's how you end up. Uh, and I think you might have noticed in, well, I noticed, in that, um, that, that the table of contents that I was going through before in the book, and I think you had creating templates somewhere down the bottom because that is the natural way of doing it. You create something first before you have something to create a template out of. Yeah, so, all right. Okay, so that's the uh, story there. Uh, anyhow, uh, however we do it, whether we click on that or whether we come down here and click on that or whether we do what the book says, which is go there and go new and select it from the dialog box, it's exactly the same thing. So, if you, you know, the book suggests you do. You do that, uh, which um, oh no, where is it? Which is um, yeah, it just says go to go to the application, go to new, and then that will pop up. You select that there, and there you have it. 
So it does suggest you save every 15 minutes. Um, whoever remembers every 15 minutes can tell us. Um, okay, so, and it does talk about having a number of copies um, around the world. Uh, perhaps email, it one, email one to yourself, put it on USB, save it on your OneDrive. You should have a OneDrive ready to go if you go save ads in a minute. All right. Hello. Oh, how are you? Come in, come in. It's almost a break time, isn't it? <laughs> I haven't started to do anything much yet. All right, so, um, all right, so yeah, we just, I was just saying uh, how you need to have a number of copies. So we're going to find out in a minute, and I was talking about OneDrive as well. And I'll talk to you about the automatic save feature that there is in AutoCAD as well. Okay, so let's go. Um, all right, so we'll open up this uh, ACAT ISO. A A A ISO. Uh, what's ISO stand for? I had someone call it uh, ACAT ISO. Uh, I, th I call it ACAT ISO because I think it's an international standards organization is the end of it, which is the metric thing. But anyway, let's open that up. All right, so it does come with this grid thing, which you can turn off. It's F7, or it's one of those things I got you to turn on from here. Yeah, which is sitting, it's the first one there. That one, or sort of first. <coughs> that one there. We don't need the grid. So that's a clean uh, screen. Now, uh, the first thing it says is to save it as something. So let's save it as something. So we're just going to press save from the quick access bar up here. Either of the save icons there will do. Um, and then just find a spot to put it in. Now you should you should have. Um, and do I have it? <laughs> uh, yes, it should be in OneDrive or some sort in there. I'll just double come around and check. All oh, good. So everybody's got one drive. That's great. I'm just going to put it in my usual D drive for now. Uh, <laughs> so don't follow me. Um, so let's um, go to the vet. Um, and uh, we've got introduction to AutoCAD here. And yeah. all right. Actually, I might just, uh, yeah, here it is. We've got a practice uh, start file here, term three. I'll just. Um, I've just got actually I've just got a practice term four. Um, uh, I've called it coordinates actually. Practice um, coordinates. Okay, that's me. All right, so it's a blank thing here. So what basically what we're going to do is um, uh, follow this on a little bit now. Ah, uh, the now we just saved it. Now this automatically saves every 10 minutes, all right, to a temporary file somewhere in your computer, uh, which you can never find. Um, and if the computer crashes or AutoCAD crashes, like you ran out of battery or whatever, hopefully it will come back next time. You open up AutoCAD and say, do you want to recover this file we found? Three different version. Here's a back. There's a usually if you've saved once and saved again. Um, say for example, now I saved it. It's blank. Uh, if I drew a line in here and I save it again, it'll create uh, a file called um, whatever the name is .dwg with a line in it. But you also create a a same name .bak backup file with a line not in it <laughs> when it was blank. All right, so it's a previous version. All right, now they're very physical. They're there. They're in the same folder as wherever I save the things. So I can easily find them. The temporary one that saves every ten minutes is somewhere hidden away that you can't find easily. All right, and um, anyway, uh, now what I'm saying is don't rely on that. It's just because it saves every ten minutes. It doesn't always mean it's going to come back to life. So you should do a physical save whenever you've done enough. All right. That's the idea of that. Okay, so I'll just delete that. Okay, so um, we'll draw a few things and I'll catch you up or maybe someone next to you can catch you up with the zooming that we did earlier. All right, so uh, for now we don't have to worry about that. Let's have a look uh, here. All right, so moving right down. All right, this is all about creating the layers. We'll, we'll get to that later. We're not going to create any of this. 
Uh, Polo tracking. Okay, forget about that. All right, so uh, drawing lines, part one, absolute and relative coordinates. All right, so what are relative and um, okay? So this talks about about the icons. If they're blue, they're they're on. If they're grey, they're not on. Uh, which is basically what we got down here. I've got some blue ones. Uh, they're a bit different since that version, but basically they the if they're blue, they're they're active. All right. Uh, okay. So I have these organised down here, uh, but I will turn off some for now. I'm going to turn off. Uh, I'm going to turn off that many. I'm leaving this one doesn't really matter. Show annotation objects. That's fine. I'm leaving the one that says snap. Object snap. Uh, and I'm leaving the one for now called dynamic input. For now. All right. Generally, we leave that one on. It's fine. Um, so. It's a bit different to what's in here, but that that's fine. Um, all right, so the first thing we do is get to this thing here that says Cartesian uh, coordinates. All right, and if I just pop over here, I think I found something in here which was probably useful for that. But I just kind of go, let's see where it is. Sorry. Uh, access to toolbar, yeah, it's a bit further down. Here we go, here. So Cartesian coordinates. This is uh, from the this is from that book chapter. All right. So that's on what page is it? Page one dash twenty two. All right. So this talks about Cartesian uh, coordinates. So everything is measured from zero comma zero. Okay. So if I was to put in, if I was to tell you put in the coordinate six comma four, it means Take 10 steps in the x direction horizontally, six steps, and then go up in the y direction, four steps. So that's where it's going to land. All right. Now, if I if I change the six to a minus six, it would just mean to draw this line over this side. So, so the minus is over here. Similarly, if I was to change the minus six, uh, sorry, the minus two, leave it minus six, but also change this to minus four, we will go, well, it will we'll go actually six that way, and we'll go down four. So it'll be down, we'll draw it down here somewhere, where it says status bar, somewhere down there. All right, so we'll draw it somewhere about that level. All right. All right. So, just get that. So everything there is measured from the zero, okay? That and that's called absolute because uh, it uses the zero comma zero the as the as the actual starting or measuring point. All right. So that's so everything starts from there. They call it absolute. All right. There's another thing called relative as well. Relative coordinates. So uh, that's an absolute coordinate, but there's also a relative coordinate. So what if I told you, okay, so I said, okay, so we've got this, we started from here, somehow we started, uh, someone said, go to 6, 4, so you went there, you've got line, type 6, 4, and don't click, because 6, 4 is the same thing as clicking. It, when you click, you actually give it a point uh, graphically on the screen, but if you're going to type the point in, you just type it in, press enter, and it goes there, no clicking required. Right? The line command is active, you type in the number, off it goes. Then someone says to you, okay, that's great. Uh, now I want you to uh, uh, finish the line. Right? This one is 6, 4, right? Now I want you to finish the line at, uh, we'll go X, always X is the first number, okay? I want you to finish the line at 9, 6. Right? So, okay. So you're typing 9, 6, again, not clicking required. Imagining this in your head, <laughs> okay? And it goes 9, go up, 6 is up here, so you join that up with that up. So the, the next dot will be about there, I don't know if you can see that. All right, about there. So in effect, it will, and I haven't got anything drawn here, it will be a line that joining, joins that 
to that. It'd be a diagonal line along here. That's what it's going to draw. All right. Now, six to nine, all right, from six to number nine, there's three numbers, right? Three steps. But from four to six, there's two steps. All right. So, really, all, the, all we did, we just went an additional three steps to the right and two steps up from where we were last. All right? So, if you were to employ a relative coordinate, you just have to put in 3,2. All right? In other words, you were just adding three more steps and two more steps up from where I was last, not from zero zero now. Good question. I was hoping someone would ask that. All right, you pick up a relative coordinate by putting in the at sign in front of it. So you got at three comma two. So it just continues from where you were and just goes three steps to the right, Sorry, two steps at, up. At, at at like your email address at sign. Yeah, shift number two. Yeah. See, AutoCAD had was using that that uh, symbol from way back in 1983, whereas email only just came in later. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we've been using that for a long time in AutoCAD. All right, so it's um, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. But but there's a but. This one here. If well, there's always a but. See that guy there, dynamic input. Hmm? That that this little icon here, dynamic input, it's currently active on my computer. All right. All right. If you have that active, it always assumes that you're working in a relative situation, relative coordinates. So even if you forget to put the at sign, it will put it in for you. So if I've got that on. All I've got to do is put in 3, 2, and we'll go to the next point. And, we'll, and if you look at the, the history, if I, if, I, if I had the history up, for example, here, and I'm checking, you'll see that it actually put it in for you automatically. That's F2 to bring that up. Anyway, I haven't done any yet, so you can't see anything. But we're now doing the theory. It's all in our head. We're going to put it in practice soon. Um, but, um, okay, so that's the um, idea. Now. Now, contrary to that, you know how I said when this thing here is on, it assumes there's an at sign in front of it. Well, that would actually, at certain times, it would stop me from actually being able to ever put in an absolute coordinate. If that's on, and I, someone says to me, you know, I'm drawing away, and then someone says, oh, go to point 65, 17, all right, absolute coordinate. Well, it'll go, it'll measure from where I went, I click last, and go, it'll never measure from zero, zero. So you actually literally have to switch this thing off before you type in that 64,17 if you actually want, at some stage down the track, an absolute coordinate. So now, it depends on the line of work you're in, and most of us are not surveyors, but, uh, you know, they, they would need to know that a lot more than we would. Um, but yeah, generally we don't work, generally we don't have absolute coordinates. It's just generally relative coordinates. Anything we do is, you know, it's relative to something in a building. So you measure from the column to the across to the passage, you measure from the corner to the door. Everything is relative to something else that you already have on your drawing. And we don't necessarily start from, you know, when you start a floor plan, for example, you don't have a known point on the world that you started from. You just start somewhere, and everything's relative from that wherever you started. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, this is something that we really only need to really know about when we are learning now, because a couple of exercises call for that. Uh, but after that, you really just leave this guy on all the time, and then everything just works out. All right. Excellent. Perfect. Now, after the break, we'll come back and put this to practice. Hey, after the commercial break. Okay, here we go. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so the next next thing to look at is uh, this. 
I think the same book, while we're in the same flavor, I might as well show you this one. Um, so, if you can imagine uh, from where you have drawn a line, uh, then you want to draw the line at an angle. You move your cursor up uh, to the angle approximately that you want. Um, and as you're moving your cursor up, and we'll see it in a minute in AutoCAD, it gives you the angle you're moving it at. Now this one here in particular is, is at 45 degrees, it says. Now that 45 degrees is measured from the horizontal at the three o'clock position on the analog clock, not the digital one, <laughs> all right, uh, or the east, all right, however you wanna see it. Um, and it works anti-clockwise or counterclockwise even. Uh, so, as you're going counterclockwise, yeah, you've got a 90, as you can see here, then 135, 180. So that's how you, you the angles are always measured from the three o'clock position um, when you have the default settings, okay? Because we can't say always, because there are other ways of working, especially if you're a surveyor, your zero is up here, and your you, you, your angles are measured clockwise, right? <laughs> but you can make AutoCAD think that way as well, but as it comes out of the box, this is how it thinks, and we've got it straight out of the box. Right? And architectural work is generally done like that. Uh, Revit itself thinks that way as well, if you don't want to do Revit. So, uh, so this is, for example, here. Uh, if I actually follow that example of before, and just try to mimic this, and I put in 6 comma 4. Um, I will do this. I'll click the line command, and I'll go 6 comma 4, and see what happens. Now, don't forget, I got my little um, dynamic input on, so anything could happen now. If I've drawn something before, which I can't remember if I did, I think I did draw a line before, and I erased it since, um, possibly. Uh, it'll it'll take it six comma four from where I last clicked, not from zero zero. So let's, let's see what happens. All right. So it's taken it from somewhere, but I don't know where. Okay, it looks like we're very close to the North Pole or wherever the zero is. <laughs> um, where is the zero on Earth? I don't know. But um, yeah, we, it looks like it, it did go to the right location. Um, but how do we know? Anyway, I'll, 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 I'll show you how we know in a minute. But for now, have a look at this. Um, as I'm moving along, because I, I had to leave this on so I can show you the angles, uh, because I, the angles don't show up if I got that dynamic input off. Okay, so that's the only reason you can see these. Uh, you can see how far this line is going. See, uh, the, the number is there. It's about 18 millimeters long. And the angle is um, 37 degrees. At the moment, if I'm looking around, see, it's always measured from. If I get come closer, it's one degree there, about ninety up there, ninety-four, whatever. Okay, so that's how they're measured. If I went down here, uh, it changes and it goes. Uh, it, it, yeah, it's 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 forty-five, forty roughly there. Uh, I clicked that accidentally, but it's about forty-five degrees from the below the, the zero. Um, so it, when you're looking at that thing, it actually changes. Uh, it still talks positive, but it, it doesn't go as long as it says it's what is it meant to be, uh, 360s all up, is it 200 and, was it, I don't know, 35, whatever, 225, I don't know, whatever it is, 270, sorry, 313, 315, 315, isn't it? Yeah, 315, it should be, if we went all the way around. Um, now, because this thing here, it just does that. But if you were to type the angle in, and you want to go, say, an, uh, a draw a line that's um, uh, 20 minutes long, and it's at 45 degrees, you're just going to type in, um, you've got your line command, you just type in, always give the distance first, 18 mil, and you give it the angle symbol, which is the one that looks like that on your keyboard which is um, above the comma on your keyboard, next to M. All right. All right, so, it's, um, so you have to go shift key and then use the comma. Uh, greater than, less than angle, yeah. All right. So I'll go um, 
at, or where's the at? Uh, and you go 18, and you go angle, and then you go 45. Now, that's a formula. You write that down. Now, that's your formula. You just change the numbers. Now, if I wanted to go uh, below the, the whatever, the, where is it, the axis, here we go. If I wanted to go draw that line below down here, a minus 45, I will have to put in minus 45, or whatever, what's the number? 315, thank you, yes. 315 the, from, the, from the audience there, a bit of help. <laughs> okay, so, or 315 positive, or minus 45. It's the same thing, all right? So you're allowed to do that. Okay. And in reality, we don't um, really do what I did before, which was to, you know, just do this and then, uh, yeah, it's about 45 there. We don't do that <laughs> because that's inaccurate, you know. Uh, what we do do, and this is touching on stuff we we're meant to be learning next week, but we're learning it as we're going along. What we do do is this. This, this guy here, there is a technique to do that. Um, and there's a thing here. Uh, there's a right angle one there, which this allows us to draw vertically or horizontally. We're going to come to that. Only locks in a vertical horizontal. But the one next to that, it, it restricts your cursor, this thing here, to certain angles. So if I wanted to draw it by eye without having to worry about whether it was exactly 45 or whether it was 45.5 or 46, I will lock it in to, by default, yours is set to 90. So it only draws horizontal or vertical. But you can actually set your crosshair so it locks in over every 45. So I could draw a line. I could do this. I could draw a line. See how it's now locking in at exactly 45 degrees. Gives me that continuation, so I can make it lock in at 45 degrees, and only then I'm able to then confidently now click there. And I know that line is exactly 45 degrees. I don't know how long it is, but I know it's exactly minus 45. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's getting a little bit ahead, but we're going to revisit that. So let's go and draw some lines and learn a few more things. That's the very, very basics, so I just sort of run through those. Now, I've zoomed in and around because I was showing you stuff, and I'm not sure if you were doing any of that stuff. You probably were as well. So uh, our first attempt to draw something may be that we have to stop and start to get everybody in the view because you all have different views. So just to get our bearings around, let's have a look um, what we can do to fix that up. Uh, let's go. Uh, that, uh, apart from, of course, closing the drawing and starting again. <laughs> uh, so we won't do that. All right. What we're going to draw is actually, uh, I'll show you what we need to draw so you, you can get it into your head so you know what you're doing. But this is where it starts from. Um, and that's about page four on here, as you can see. We're going to go right down the bottom. And there's a drawing A, which you're drawing here. And it's about that big. Uh, that line there is 250. Uh, that's 180 and whatever, so 250 in a bit. You know, if you, if you allowed a 300 by like 250 or something area, then you you'll be okay. You know, but we we won't we won't do that. We what we're gonna do is um uh, actually I'll, I'll tell you something what we're gonna do that we, so we can get get us all on the same page as this. We're gonna go into AutoCAD and we're gonna perform one of these commands over here that's on this navigation bar. And if you go where it says extends and you have a little down arrow where you click, gives you these options here. It's the one called zoom all. What that would do is it's gonna make sure you you don't have anything on the screen, delete everything that you've done. And then you can zoom all. And that'll bring the screen to be the same for everyone. I mean it's invisible. I mean there's nothing there you can't see, you don't know where you are, it's like space. You have no bearings, but uh, everyone should be the same now. Okay, so we can actually even utilize the coordinates down the bottom to make sure it is roughly the same. You right? Yeah. Zoom all, not extends. So now we, what the way you can, only, the only way you can tell is if I move my cursor to the left and read down here in the in the um, coordinates. Uh, the left is around about, you know, minus 12, 78, or whatever I am. And um, 
uh, up on sort of roughly up here is 427 by 289. So this is actually roughly about an A3 page we've got in front of us. Uh, so that will definitely fit that diagram we talked about before. All right, it's enough room for it. All right, so it should be okay. All right, so let's uh, start drawing. Sorry. Ah, let me check. All right, so back, uh, now we're going to start drawing something. So let's go here. All right, we're going to start drawing here. In fact, it tells us on this diagram, I'm right at the bottom almost of this document. Uh, it tells us where to start from. Uh, but then above on page four, it just actually breaks that right down. In fact, breaks it so much down, I, I get lost in the, in the actual instructions myself. Um, but uh, basically, we're going to start from 73, 38, which is there. Um, so if you were following that on page four, it says, all right, absolute relative coordinates, do all that, do all that. Here, enter the first Cartesian coordinate. So it says 73, 38, then it breaks it down. Type 73, followed by a comma. But where do you actually issue the line comma? There it is. Issue the line command, then you do that. All right, so this is this is how it works. So you issue the line command, you just click on line, and um, then you go to 73, 38, yeah. Now, just make sure you've got this dynamic input off before you type in that number. You can actually toggle this thing on and off in the middle of the line command. If you're doing a whole lot of lines, you can actually toggle it on and off. Uh, in the middle of the command, so which I am in the middle of the command now. So I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to put in the 73 comma 38, just like it is. All right, don't put a dot; it's got to be a comma. Okay. All right, so 73 comma 38. All right, just type it in and press enter, and that's where it begins from. That far away from the bottom left, which is a zero zero. All right. I was going to show you how to <laughs> work out what the ID is, but anyway, I'll show you later when we stop. Um, so, so then the thing is here now. Um, I've got to just. And then he says here. Uh, then he says, "All right, now we're going to do a relative Cartesian coordinate, which is at 250. Try and find it in here." It's not even, it's all broken down too much, you know. Uh, it's basically at 250, which you type in at 250, and then you want you, want you to put in, um, uh, that's 250 in the X, and then you've got to go zero in the Y. So this is, you're trying to produce, all right, so you're trying to produce this line here. So from where we are now, we want to go across 250, all right, in the X. We don't want to go anywhere up or down in the Y. So we want to remain horizontal. All right? So there's a formula to do that. Right? Enter. 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 At 250, no enter. Not yet. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's why the instructions are so broken down. You don't know what you're meant to be doing. So this, the whole picture is this. At 250, <coughs> comma, zero. All right, that's the whole picture. Then you enter. So we're going from where we are, the at sign. We're traveling 250 in the X, but we're going nowhere in the Y, zero. So horizontal, and then we press enter. That's horizontal now. All right, so that's that's done. Hmm? Is this horizontal? Oh, hang on. We have a... All right, so... Uh, there is the undo command here, so you can actually undo one segment at a time uh, rather than escaping and then doing undo. It doesn't make sense here because I'll show you. If I made a mistake here like this, all right, oh, gee, that's not what I should, should have done. I just click here and it goes back and back. See that? So um, otherwise, if I pressed escape and then undo, the whole thing would have, the whole, the whole lot would have been undone. So now what I want you to do is undo this one. This, Original one we just did. I'm going to undo it to the beginning of where we just put in those coordinates. You don't have to. You can just watch if you don't. If you've gone ahead, 
because I'm going to show you another way of entering that exact same line, right? Using this time what's called polar coordinates, using a distance and an angle rather than x and a y, no? So the distance we know is still 250, but the angle is what? No, it's horizontal. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's zero. All right. So I could put in at, just so another way of expressing the line is at 250 at the angle of zero. Exact same thing, thing right? Mm. All right. <clears throat> I'll undo it again and I'll show you another way. And you can choose which one you want to do next time you come across a horizontal or a vertical line. So I'll undo that. All right, so another way now. However, this way, you need to make sure you have this thing here on the ortho. There's a button there. Ortho. That locks in your crosshair to horizontal or vertical only. You, you can't rub a band in between. It's the bottom one that looks like a right angle. All right, right angle. <laughs> All right. Um, it's just just there. All right. So if if I have that, all I've got to do is point to the direction that I want this to go, which is the right to the right, and I just put in 250, punch it in, and press enter. All right. So I don't require to put any at or angles or anything like that. Yeah. If you if you do stop this, all right, accidentally or intentionally. For some reason, you just come out of this, like I will now. Uh, you can restart the line command, and if you got your object snaps on, you can just go up to there and click on the endpoint, and it will just latch on to the exact endpoint, and you can go from there. Now, the next lot of lines are basically uh, are not. Well, this one is not straight. Um, this one here, they're, they're giving us an angle. That unfortunately is measured from the wrong location. It's not measured from the three o'clock position, but uh, in a straight line there's 180 degrees. So this is the only bit of maths we've got to do. Someone please do it for me. Uh, so uh, yeah, so it's probably a 45, isn't it? Yeah. So it's 180 minus 135 leaves us 45 here. So we've got to measure it from as if um, it's this internal angle in here. So we know it's 60. Yeah, the length of it. So uh, we just got to put it in. I, I'm just going to take off this orthogonal thing. F8 turns it on and off as well. F8. It will actually toggle this button on and off. So I press F8 here now. You can see it going on and off. So you can learn that if you want. Um, it, no, it doesn't matter whether that orthogonal thing is on or off uh, when I'm typing in um, angles in now, but I just turned it off because it just feels more comfortable on the screen for me, that's all. Uh, so I can go at 60, was it? 60. Uh, and then shift in the angle. And I'm going to put in um, 45. So, um, so basically no, you can see that, but that's what I put in at 60 at the angle of 45. And I pressed enter. Now the next one, um, the next one is 75 up. You've got choices now. You've got three choices for the next one. You choose. Are you going to go at 0 in the X, 75 in the Y? Are you going to go at Zero. Uh, are you going to go at 75 long at the angle of 90, measured from three o'clock, or are you just going to lock on your uh, orthographic on, head up, and type in 75 enter? Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll take the easy choice, and I'm going to go for the orthographic and go head up and type in 75 enter. Yeah. Because you're going to have plenty of practices to do those unusual angles <laughs> with all the rest of it. But yeah, it's up to you how you do it, uh, as long as you understand the principle. So the next one, they've given us a, uh, basically coordinates. We don't have the length of that. We don't have the length of this angle, this line here, nor do we know the angle of it. 
so we have to work with the fact that it's um, the because I'm hanging here now and I just need to turn off my F8. And I want to do something like this. So I want to go back 50 steps this way to in the X. And I go back. So I'm backwards from where I'm standing. It's going to my to my left. So it's got to go minus in the X. So it's minus 50. All right. And um, sorry. And but it's going upwards in the Y direction. It's going 60. So that's a positive. But the 50 is a negative. So you can imagine um, if I go back to this one here, uh, this one here, this one, this one, this one here. You can imagine that um, from where where I'm standing, you can you can always where where my last point is. You can, you, know, you can always just in your head move this axis up to that point and imagine that's your new zero zero and then am I going to the left of that or am I going to the right of that in the X or am I going above that or below that in the Y and that's how you know whether you're going to put a positive or a negative number in so now if I go here it looks to me that I'm going I'm going to end up from where I'm standing here I'm going to end up to the left of that so it's going to be in the X is going to be definitely a negative 50 and the Y is going to be a positive. But I need to actually put in the at sign in front of it to do that. All right, I'll show you why. So it's a 50 and a, and a, a, a 60. Okay, okay, 50 and a 60. So if I just put in minus 50 without the at sign, comma 60, what will happen? Now I, I'll do that. 60. See how it goes down? It actually went to the location of measuring that um, 60 up. And it went, I'm not sure what happened here. Actually, it's unpredictable what happened here because, or maybe, maybe it is below zero. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, and I've got the, the wrong thing here. So if I click on here, it'll give me. What did I put in? Oh, yeah, positive 60. Sorry, I did put in a positive 60, not a negative 60. My error. So um, so it is actually uh, 0, 0 is about here. I'm reading the coordinates at the moment. 0, 0 is about that's 0 there and down. So 0 is about there. It's not where that icon is. Right, so that's what happens if you don't put the at sign. It just goes to the location measured from the 0, 0. Now, if that didn't work for you, it could be because you've got this dynamic input on and it actually does put the at sign for you automatically in front of it. Question? All right, so I'll just now what I've done, I'm gonna so I'm gonna undo that and I've just turned on this dynamic input. I'm gonna try the same thing without putting the at sign and see what it does. So I'm gonna put in minus fifty, comma sixty. There you go. So what it did, if you can see that far, it actually put in the at sign for me in front of it. it actually did do that. It's as if I typed in at. So it knows to go relative from where I was last. 50 steps back, 60 steps up. All right. So that's what it did. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. So... So if I undo this, uh, so I was there, I made sure I have on dynamic input and I just typed in, now I can put in add if I want, but I didn't because dynamic input, I know it's going to put it for me, minus 50 comma 60, there it is. So because I didn't, the first time I didn't have the dynamic input on and I just typed in minus 50 comma 60, it went somewhere unpredictable, or it was predictable. It went, six, you know, it went measuring from zero zero. All right. Which one are you doing? You're right. So I'm going to do the next one. So I'm going to go 80 for this one. So I'm going to. I've got a few horizontals and verticals coming up. So I'm just going to lock in my. My cross, my um, orthogonal, 
and I'm just going to go uh, 80, 50, and 180. All right, so it's 80, 50, and 180. So it's 80 that way. Enter. Up 50. Across 180. Enter. All right. So, oh, is that right? Look all right. <laughs> yes. No, exactly. When you put the author on, you don't need to worry about typing in the angle. Or, hey? Okay, why is it like that? That's that's called what? Well, that's that's actually the exercise B that we are not doing. So uh, it's called like that because it's using what's called uh, this exercise is actually doing that, or that's how you do it. It's called direct distance entry. So basically. Uh, it, it just goes with the direction of your line, wherever you're pointing. It works out because I'm going, for example, uh, because I was going to the left, it knows I'm going to 180 degrees. It knows that's I'm heading to that. Yeah. If I'm going down, it knows that I'm going 270 down because it's uh, 0, 90, 180, 270. So it puts it in itself. Yeah, yeah. It just knows the direction. Mm, mm. Yeah, put it on. Yeah, click it. Then it'll be definite. Okay. Now you come out of that command, did you? Yeah, if you come out of the command, you just uh, yeah, just got to you have. Yeah, you know that's how you've done it, but but you dropped out, so you've got to click on there now. Click to start the line again, because you come out of the actual line command. What you've done is somehow, see mine is connected, what you've done is somehow come out of that now, so I need to click the line command again and just start again from there. So that's what happens if you, what you can do if you come out of your line command. And then you can just click on there because it says endpoint, it will pick up the endpoint automatically and away you go. All right, so um, we're doing diagram we're in fact doing diagram A and B all in one. So if we go into uh, the next one, it's giving us an angle and it's giving us uh, a distance. So now, again, this one here has got to be measured, well, it's got to be measured all the way around like this, anticlockwise, or as I said before, we can do a minus. So we could do minus 135 from the three o'clock position. So it's measured from this horizontal line. We can do minus. So this one here, we could type in, um, oh, what was the distance? At 50. So type in at 50 angle minus 135. See what happens. I'm not sure. See, I worked. Well, it's funny. Mine went the other way. I put minus uh, Did you put the at in front of it? Oh, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, we'll find, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll have, a, have a look. <laughs> okay, so some of you were getting unexpected results because you were doing possibly this, which is um, at minus 50 at the angle of, what did you put in? 135, sir? No, minus, minus 135. So uh, I suppose two negatives make a positive. <laughs> I don't know. But um, yes, in fact, that's what's happening there. You get that instead. So always when we are going to give an angle, the angle governs the direction of the line. So the line, you just have to give it how long it is. We don't, we don't put that the length of the line is never going to be negative. Um, it's the just, the yeah, the angle comes from 3 o'clock. Uh, but the angle tells it which direction it's going to go. It's not such thing as... It's like I'm telling you to walk uh, 10 meters southeast, yep. all right? I'm not saying walk negative 10 meters southeast. I just say go southeast. Southeast is the one that's telling you the oh, angle you've got to yeah, walk to. Yeah. So that length of 10 meters is always going to be 10 meters, where it's northeast, southeast, whatever. Gotcha. All right, gotcha. yeah. yeah. All right. So always the length. It's only when you have X and a Y that you've got to think about whether it's a negative or a positive. Yeah. That's good. That's a great lesson to learn, actually. There. Yeah. So let's go. Um, so yeah. So, so the correct thing is at 
uh, what is it, 50, was it? At the angle of minus 135. We've got to be careful we don't make a mistake here, because if we make a mistake here, uh, we've got to carry it through to the end, and this thing will never close up. <laughs> All right, we've had that, had that before. All right, so now we're just going to go down 35 after that. Uh, there's a couple of horizontals here, so I'll just lock in my crosshair, which I already have. 35 and then 110. 35 enter, I'm just pointing down, pointing across, 110, so enter. You actually, you just put in 35, you just put in. Nothing. 35, 35 enter. You just got to point down first and then type in 35 enter. No? Oh, so the next thing is um, 135, sorry, it's 35 degrees. This one is easy because it's already off our 3 o'clock position. All right, so the angle we've got set, we've got the number. So we're just going to go what? We're always the distance goes first. The formula is at, at 70. 70. Uh, angle symbol. 35. 35, easy. So at 70, angle 35. Now, that's done. Now, I've already got in my horizontal. It's already, I just left it there. I didn't. Take it off. I didn't take it off, so I can go and do the last three easily. It's 100, 130, and 50. So it's 100. I'm pointing in that direction, 100. And then go down, 130, and 50. There go, very quickly there. All right, uh, so where are we at? We're here. All right, so the next one is... Um, 80 length, so go at 80. So those of you who had a bit of time to uh, think, uh, so go, oops, I'm doing my typing over here. Uh, at 80. All right, and the angle is, shift key, and the angle is 25. All right, because, because it's um, 180 minus 155, because the angle we want is the one that's missing here. All right, so if you imagine this line going across, <laughs> that'll be 25. All right, easy. All right, it's just getting your head around the angles, the main thing, but yeah. So the next thing they're giving us is not an angle and a distance, but they're giving us some coordinates, 53 and 53. So it looks like from where we're standing here now, we're about there now, as you can see from our drawing, we're here, all right? So we're at this position there. We've got to land over here, and we've got to travel 53. So from where I'm standing there now, my cursor, I'm going towards a positive x direction. So that's positive 53. But then I'm going from where I'm standing, I'm going below that is the y direction. You know, I'm going below that to get to here. That's a negative 53. Hey. No? <laughs> Imagine drawing yourself um, a little cross a cursor here, like a uh, an axis, the y-axis and the x-axis, and see where which side you're on. So I'm with this 53 here. I'm actually on the right-hand side of the y-axis, which means I'm in the positive. It's a bit confusing. I'm in the positive x, but but for the y bit. Um, I'm below the x-axis, which means I'm actually in the negative y. So uh, we've got to put in minus 53 for the y there, but positive for the x. So this one will be at 53, comma, minus 53. Like that. Now, also, depending what sort of work you're doing, you're probably never going to use this uh, system again, not to this extent. Um, you know, if you do on floor plans, generally uh, uh, some sort of uh, horizontal vertical lines or a 45 or a 30 or whatever, but there may be a case where you have to draw, you know, well, for example, an elevation, you want to do the roof at 22 and a half degrees, pitch, how you do it, well, you need to know how to do it. You know, and this is the tool you have here. Uh, all right, so now the finishing bit, how do we finish it off? Well, we go to the beginning. Give me a second because I'm running out of power on this thing. Did I bring it? I did. There it is. Um, all right, so basically, 
All right, so basically the next one is to go to back to the original location, which is 73,38, and you must turn off this dynamic input if you've got it on to do that. All right, so it's, uh, I forgot the number again, 73,38. I should know that by now, 73,38. It's a magic number. All right, there you go. So back to that. Now, the, uh, the only thing is uh, everybody's will go back there, but how do we know we've done it right? What if we instead of putting 250 here, we put in 245, you know, and then we worked our way all the way around. And, um, you know, it'll just mean that perhaps this line is a tad shorter. All right. So how do we check that we've got it right? Well, you've got to measure it or dimension it, like some people have walked around and put some dimension on already, uh, but you don't need to dimension it. Dimensioning will give you the, the right answer, actually. I'll, I'll tell you why, because if we measure this now, there's a measure tool here, I click it, and I, if, as long as I've got my object snaps on down here, um, I'll go to the end point there, and then I'll go to the end point here, and it says it's 138, I'm reading this here now, 138.51. So obviously they gave us this number here, but they haven't given us any angles here or anything, so we couldn't really do that other system. It's purely the numbers there for us to check that we've got we've finished up all right. So, um, yes, 138.51 is the correct answer, but when you're dimensioning, which is what they've done there, actually uh, it rounds it up to the nearest millimeter. The dimension command is by default designed that way. It, it, it doesn't have to be, but they, that's how they've done it. So um, in a way, you might think you're wrong, but if you've got 138.51, you're probably right. You should be right. <laughs> Assuming I'm right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Measure it. Yeah, that measure, yeah, here, up here, under the utilities, if you got that up there, it's just a little measure. Oh, there is, no, it's not up here, sorry. Here, there's one. Uh, you just click it, and then you go there, and it says endpoint, as long as you've got your object snaps active, here. All right. Click there, and then you click to the endpoint there, and then it gives you some numbers here. Now, uh, if I turn off, if I turn, look, another way of doing it is this. Can you turn on your dynamic input now and it'll give you a better graphical way of, of the answer? So turn on your dynamic input, do the measure again, and then click at the end point, and then at the end point there, and it gives you the numbers up on the screen. All right, like that. So some of you might, you know, haven't got the right number. So you've got to go through and next, and with this same system, go through and check every bit of line, or just go straight to the one you think you might have got wrong, um, and measure it. But, so if I, if, if I was measuring this, obviously that's easy, I go across, and it tells me it's 250. Uh, if I'm measuring this one here though, uh, there's something else I've got to read, if I go here to here, right here, I'm not interested in the, in, I'm not interested in the, um, in the length, which is just behind there, let me just zoom in a bit, uh, see how it helps. All right, so in this one here, I'm not interested in the length of 78.1025, but this one I'm rather interested in the 50, which is the number given to us, and the 60. So if you have a look over here, I'm interested that I put in this number right and this number right. So that one is correct. So as you're going through checking, just make sure you're reading the right number. Don't, don't look at this because there's no use checking because they never gave us that length there. The computer will give it to you now. Right, so as you're going through, checking most likely you probably stuffed up the uh, angles somewhere. Check the angles maybe first and see where you went wrong. If you find out where you went wrong, uh, probably the easiest way is to start from there and go delete everything and start going around because it's such a complicated shape. Normally if it was a house, something like that, um, which is more orthogonal, Sorry, it's easy. Eh? Somebody's going to send you a bill to rectify it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, your drafty will send you a bill to rectify it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But normally we would use the stretch command or something, depending what the problem was. So basically what we want to do is uh, finish up here now and just go back to your AutoCAD drawing here after you checked it all and whatever. Just bring it out uh, to see the whole picture um, and just save it and just keep it for your reference. We won't need it. I don't need to see it or you don't need to submit it, but just uh, save it and, and keep it. It's proof that you've done something. <laughs> All right, and then just close close AutoCAD, um, you know, from up here and shut the computer down. You leave the measurements up as you go around, so if you're checking it from, can you leave them on the screen? No, uh, no, okay, good question. Very, you know, I had a bit, but yeah, we'll do some dimensions later. Okay, so you have to ready to go. There you go, yeah. Well, you must have got a minute for finishing and getting it right, eh? <laughs> yeah. All right, now. Yeah, I 
Let me just save this thing and I'll be right in. The door's open. I'll just um, have I finished this. Oh, oh it's still recording. Look at that. I'm glad I came back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop that. Apologies, guys.